humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill. I've got another story for you today. Isn't that nice? Today we're covering the story of Samson and Delilah, uh, and including all the bits that, uh, that Sunday School deliberately misses out on. It is a bonkers story. Basically, back in the olden times, there's a husband and a wife who've never been able to uh, conceive a child. Classic opener. Classic. But don't you worry, because one day the angel of God rocked up and showed himself to uh, the wife and he said, Hey, yo, wife who doesn't have a name. I know you've never been able to have kids. Don't worry about it. Don't even worry. You're gonna have a son, alright? So what you gotta do now is you gotta is stop drinking wine and beer. You gotta start eating better, okay? It's very important. Also, heads up, don't ever cut the baby's hair. Not drinking and eating healthier, generally pretty uh, good advice for pregnant women, but also in particular this was because the baby was to be dedicated as a Nazarite. A Nazarite is someone who shows their devotion to God, their holy dedication by, you know, never drinking, being very particular with the foods they eat, never cutting their hair, and also never touching uh, a dead body. Which again, just feels like general, pretty, all-rounder good advice. You heard it here first, folks. Don't go touching corpses. Unless it's your job. That's some people's jobs. The angel, by the way, doesn't tell the woman who he is. He just shows up and says, you're gonna have a baby, looking scary as hell. Cause biblical angels look scary as hell. And then poof, he's gone. The woman didn't want to question him. She was just like, okay, yeah, baby, no drinking. Don't cut its hair, got it terrifying dude. But when she talked to her husband about it later and said this horrifying man appeared to me and told me that I'm gonna have a baby and you know what, I believe him. She said, and it might sound crazy, but he looked as horrifying as an angel of God. And the husband went, yep, that sounds pretty legit. So he went and he he prayed for the angel to, to pop by again, and the angel did just that. Popped around for dinner, although he didn't need anything. He requested instead that they uh, burn the goat as an offering. And the three of them uh, try to make small talk, and the husband says, So, what's your name? And the angel says, Why would you want to know my name? My name is a name of wonder. And he never tells them his name. He tells the couple again, never cut the baby's hair, don't drink, don't do the things, and uh, and then he vanishes in another puff of smoke and they really didn't get any more information than they already had. So anyway, nine months later, Samson is born and the couple never cut his hair. Later on in life, Samson uh, sees a Philistine girl while he's off in town and he falls in love with her. Philistines as uh, the modern usage of the word might indicate, are sort of the, the general baddies of the, of the Old Testament of the Bible. So Samson, being an Israelite, is this is a, a shocking twist for him to fall in love with this woman. I'm sure that this will go down well. In fact, uh, this passage actually indicates, it says that uh, Samson falling in love with the Philistine girl was the Lord's guidance because God wanted a reason to pick a fight with the Philistines. So yes, only smooth sailing from here, I can assume. So Samson goes to his parents and he says, this is the girl I want to marry, we need to go and talk to her parents, we need to arrange something, I must marry this girl. And Samson's dad says, couldn't you have picked like literally anyone else? And Samson says, no, I love her. And so they go to make arrangements. And while they're walking to the town to uh, meet with the girl's parents, they cross through a vineyard. Samson's gotten distracted, he's wandered off, and suddenly he hears a lion roaring, a young lion, and as the lion leaps at Samson to, I, 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 I presume, kill and eat him, Samson is filled with strength, super strength, and he tears that lion apart. He tears it apart as if it were a, a goat and not a lion. Just tears it apart with his bare hands. I do feel like um, tearing apart a goat is also quite strong. I mean, I know I couldn't do that. I don't know, it just seems like a high bar to set for the strength scale. He looks at his hands, all covered in blood, and he decides to keep it to himself that he killed this lion. Does it count as touching a corpse if you made it into a corpse? Like, at that moment, like once, like, as you tear it apart and it dies in your hands, does that count as touching a corpse? Not that it's gonna matter in a minute anyway. Samson 
doesn't tell anyone about his lion encounter. Um, they go, no one questions his blood-covered hands. They talk to the parents and they organize a wedding. Now, a few days later, Samson is traveling to the town so that they can begin the seven days of the wedding. And on his way there, he leaves the road to go and check on his lion carcass that he left in the vineyard. To Samson's surprise, the lion carcass is uh, full of bees and honey. What do you think he's gonna do with that, uh, that dead lion bee honey, huh? Yeah, he, he goes on and he scoops it out with his hands and just eats it. Oh boy, that, that cannot be a good idea, but he does it anyway. And he takes the honey with him and he munches on it while he walks. Later on, he feeds some of the honey to his parents without telling them where it came from, which is just gross and not cool. At the wedding, there are 30 Philistine men. They come to celebrate the wedding of Samson and this unnamed Philistine girl. And Samson gets all cocky and he says, I bet each and every one of you 30 Philistine men that none of you can solve within seven days, the seven days of this wedding. I'll bet none of you can solve my riddle. I will bet each of you one piece of fine linen and one fine outfit, because each of them was wearing a very fine outfit, that none of you can solve my riddle. We'll take the bet, give us your riddle. And Samson says, out of the eater came something to eat, out of the strong came something sweet. Four days pass with the 30 Philistine men unable to come up with an answer to Samson's riddle and, and they begin to panic. So finally they threaten to set Ms. Philistine's house on fire and then also to take some of that fire and to burn her with it if she doesn't find out the answer to Samson's riddle for them. The woman is understandably freaked the hell out and she goes to Samson crying and says please please just tell me the answer to the riddle. So Samson breaks and he tells her the story about the lion and so on the seventh day when Samson says who can answer my riddle the 30 Philistine men say what is stronger than a lion huh what is sweeter than honey the, the answer is honey and a lion. And Samson is super mad that, uh, that his riddle didn't work out. And so Samson's answer is to use his super strength to just go and kill 30 random people. Ooh, what was that? Oh, my heart. Oh. He goes and murders 30 people and he steals their fancy clothes and he gives them to the Philistines. But he's so angry to have been betrayed by his new bride that he says, I never want to see you ever again. And he storms out. The bride's dad sort of goes, well, I, I mean, we've already had the wedding. I guess you're married to the, the best man now. Okay, go live in bliss. Sometime later, Samson decides that actually he did want to see his bride again uh, because he wants a bit of the sex. So he shows up at her dad's house and says, hey, where's your daughter? I want a bit of the sex. And the dad says, whoa, I thought you were being uh, for real when you said that you never wanted to see us again uh, and stormed out. So I married her to the best man unfortunate, but you know what? Doesn't even matter. Her sister's prettier than she is anyway. You can marry her. No big deal. But Samson thinks it is a big deal and he says, that's it. No one can blame me for what I do to the Philistines now. And he goes, okay, he goes off into the woods and he captures 300 foxes, right? 300 foxes. And uh, one by one, pair by two by two, he ties them up in pairs. He, he ties their tails together so that each of the foxes is paired with another fox. Two foxes at a time. And then he sticks a torch in the knot of the tails. And then he sets the torches on fire. 300 foxes, 150 torches. And he throws the foxes into the Philistine wheat fields where they understandably run around panicked, setting everything on fire. Tell you what. What a strategy. What a, what a battle plan that was from Samson. I bet they never saw that coming. The people are like, who in the hell threw flaming foxes into our wheat fields? And when they found out that it was Samson, you would think that they'd go after Samson, right? But no, that's not what happened. Uh, the, they found out that Samson did it because the man had married the girl to the best man at the wedding. They blame the woman. They go and they uh, they burn Samson's wife to death and uh, her whole family with her. But Samson takes offense at this because that was his beloved wife and his beloved father-in-law. 
and the sister that he'd never met who was apparently prettier. So Samson uh, kills all the Philistine men who set his wife's family on fire using his super strength. And then he goes to live in a cave. The Philistines decide they're gonna take it out on the people of Israel and the people of Israel say, ah, why are you doing this? And the Philistines say, because of Samson. So the Israelites go up to the cave and they say, Samson, buddy, uh, we don't wanna do this, but we gotta take you and give you over to the Philistines because they're gonna kill us if we don't hand you over. And Samson says, you gotta promise me that you're not gonna kill me before you hand me over. And they say, yeah, sure, whatever. And so Samson lets the people tie him up. They bring him down and they throw him at the feet of the Philistines. But seeing the Philistines draw their swords and come towards him, Samson uses that super strength to break free of his bonds and to pick up uh, the jawbone of a donkey that, uh, that was nearby in order to kill a thousand men. But... While he does this, he, like a morbid Winnie the Pooh, makes up a little song. It goes something like this. With the jawbone of a donkey, I killed a thousand men. With the jawbone of a donkey, I piled them up in piles. That's it. That's the song. You can look it up. Judges 15, 16. Now standing in a field of dead people, Samson shouts at God, for letting him get thirsty. What is this, he says. I'm just meant to not exert myself by killing a thousand men. I'm just meant to stand here without a stream to drink from. Thanks, God. And so God makes a spring and Samson drinks from it and then nothing happens for 20 years. Now we're getting to the bit that people recognize. Samson falls in love with a woman named Delilah. Now the five kings of Philistine go to Delilah and they promise her just, just so much gold. If she can trick Samson into telling her what's the source of his strength, how do we tie him up, how do we kill him? So one day Delilah's sitting with Samson and she says, hey, honey bun, um, if, uh, if someone was to say, try to murder you, right? Uh, how would they go about tying you up so that you couldn't fight back? Like, uh, how would they sap you of all your strength so that you can't kill them and they can kill you? Just out of curiosity. She's a subtle woman, our Delilah. In the first intelligent maneuver Samson has made since his birth, he lies. He says, oh, it's very simple. You just gotta tie me up with seven bowstrings. Seven new bowstrings that have never been strung. Wax them up real good then tie me up with them. So Delilah does just that. She ties up Samson with seven new bowstrings that are all waxed up and have never been strung on a bow. And then she calls in the, the Philistine ambush that's waiting in the other room. She does have the presence of mind to say, oh no, Samson, it's the Philistines. What will we do? Good faking, Delilah. And Samson, using his immense strength, breaks free of his bonds and, uh, and he kills the Philistines. Sidebar, I've heard people in the past ask, why would Samson even let Delilah tie him up in the first place. What an idiot. But we know why he was letting Delilah tie him up. We know. We know. But now Delilah is stuck having to try again and she says, all right, buddy, you made a you made a real fool of me. So tell me for real this time how someone would uh, tie you up and sap you of your strength and uh, kill you. And Samson says to her, oh, well, you have to tie me up with uh, brand new ropes that have never been used to tie a knot. And the whole charade happens again. Delilah ties Samson up. The Philistines come in from the other room. She says, oh no, we're being attacked. Samson breaks free. He beats them up. Delilah says again, look, buddy, why do you keep lying to me? Clearly, you have not been sapped of your super strength. So, I would like it if you could stop messing with me now. Tell me how to sap you of your super strength so that you can be killed, please. And Samson says, you have to tie my dreadlocks, you have to weave them into a loom and then make it tight with a peg. That's how you sap me of my strength. All right, no kink shame in here. And so Delilah does just that and the Philistines come in and she says, oh no, and Samson kills them and she says, Buddy, you gotta quit lying to me right this second. Tell me how I kill you. <laughs> and she nags Samson for months on end until finally Samson says, all right, fine, you gotta cut off my hair. My hair is the source of my strength. I'm 
a Nazarite, I've been dedicated to God. If I cut my hair, I lose my strength because I've lost my connection to God. And Delilah almost doesn't believe him, but finally she calls on the kings of Philistine to send their men once again, and she sets it up. While Samson is asleep, she cuts off all of his dreadlocks, and she calls in the Philistines. They ambush Sam- they ambush Sambush, I nearly said. They ambush Samson, and they attack him and tie him up, and Samson finds he can't fight them. His strength is gone. The Philistines blind Samson, and they chain him, and they put him to work at the prison mill. One day, though, while uh, congratulating themselves on how excellent they are, the five kings of Philistine decide to hold a fabulous party and to force Samson to come and, and be the fool for their party, just to show how low he'd been made. So Samson has to stand there as all the Philistines come in and point and they laugh at him. He can't see anything, but he can hear a young boy passing by, and he asks the young boy to uh, guide him to the, to the pillar so that he can lean against them so that he may rest. And the boy, bless him, does it. As the Philistine kings uh, are toasting to themselves once more, Samson quietly prays to God for one last surge of strength. For Samson to be blessed with God's might once more. Samson puts one hand on each of the central pillars beside him and he shouts, I'm gonna die and I'm taking you with me. And he pushes with all of his strength and collapses each of the pillars holding up the building. And so Samson killed more Philistines in his death than he had even in his life. Which is a lot, because he'd already killed a lot. And that's the end of the story. Samson is basically the vegan ex-boyfriend from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Chicken isn't vegan? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed that story. If you did, then you can show it with all the things around the video. You know how the internet works. Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma and I will see you some other time. Ah, ah, ah. With the jawbone of a donkey, I killed a thousand men. With the jawbone of a donkey. It's catchy, right?